For this first match, I think that Danny's going to get beat by Quinlan. Danny has a lot of endurance. He is a strong puller. He can sit in the middle. Uh, he does seem like a defensive puller, but I just don't think his defensive style matches up well against Quinlan. I think Quinlan has a more powerful hit. And when I watched him pull Ryan Bowen, Ryan was able to easily flip his hand back. So I just think that unlike the match versus Ryan, Quinlan will pin him. It'll be quicker. It'll be harder for him to hold in, uh, in a defensive position. And I'll explain a little bit more of what I see in the upcoming videos. So let's take a look at this first match with Danny versus Devin. It looks like Danny's got good stopping power and endurance. He's a good counter puller, but this is a left hand match. Devin's kind of letting him go wherever he wants. There was no ready go, so we're completely taking the hit off the table. But obviously, Danny's a pretty strong puller if he's even able to make Devin struggle a little bit. All right, and then we look at Danny versus Justin Bishop. It's left hand again, which doesn't really showcase his right hand skills, but he is pretty dominant. Uh, he has decent strap technique. His ability to hook here is impressive. He actually is not only top rolling, kind of is able to turn in a little bit. And even though he doesn't get the jump, he doesn't get the hit, uh, you see here he's going to slowly wear down Justin until he's able to pull him back in and eventually work his way over to the pen pad. So again, he's a pretty good technician. I will give Danny that, but I just don't know if he comes up against a powerful puller that is going to hit much harder if that's really going to work for Danny. I think his advantage is once he can hit and catch, um, basically that changes everything. His ability to catch somebody and counter them is, is I think, everything for Danny. So, uh, this is left hand. You know, Justin Bishop's pretty good right-handed, but I don't think this tells the whole story, but at least it does tell us that, hey, he knows how to counter as long as he can catch a uh, talented arm wrestler. And then we go on to him pulling Ryan Bowen. This is the part that makes me think that Danny uh, might have a harder time with Quinlan because Bowen I don't really consider to be an offensive puller, but you see him easily take Danny's hand right off the go. Boom. His hand's open again. Danny's able to actually outlast Ryan and slowly pull him back to his side, and, I, and that's how Danny's able to kind of win a little bit here. But I just don't think he would actually be able to do that versus Quinlan. I think Quinlan's going to hit so hard, so fast, I don't think that he's actually going to be able to catch Quinlan. Maybe he gets one catch by adjusting, maybe he gets one win in this matchup. But I think that there's a difference between Quinlan and, and Ryan here. So when, you know, it's Ryan versus Danny here, they're both defensive pullers in my mind. They both try to work their way from the center of the table, let the other person make the mistakes, wear the other guy down, and eventually work your way to the pen pad. Um, but he does seem to be able to at least catch all of Ryan's hits. I, I think that's the big game changer. Can he catch Quinlan? We'll see. All right, so now let's watch Quinlan versus Justin Bishop. Justin's top roll is almost completely dominant for Quinlan. And because we don't see Danny really going straight into this attack of a top roll. This is why I think Quinlan won't have as much trouble with Danny as he did with, with Justin. I mean, he's able to battle it out here in the center here, as you're seeing. But the thing is, is that I think that Justin's top roll is just so strong that it's hard to hold anybody in that flop wrist position for too long, unless you're somebody like Todd Hutchins. But as you can see, again, like I said, it, it, it's tough for him to really beat Justin because I think that a but top Quinlan roll is kind of a strong back. top roll anyways is uh, Mendes's weakness in my opinion drive, Justin Bishop is your winner. okay and then we move on to Tony Katowski so this first match Quinlan got dominated but I think he shows in the very next match his ability to adapt this is key I mean if he pulls Danny in the WAL and Danny gets him the first time I think he'll adapt just like he did here you see his versatility you know he changed his style he went into a Kings move and then he found out okay well if I could just hold this Kings move I can wear Tony down and Tony is very strong I mean he's a hammer winner he he's won wall before and yet he's still able to hold Tony right in the center of the table drain him with a Kings move that I didn't even know Quinlan had in his arsenal and then he ends up working his way, transitioning to that press right there and getting his first win against Tony. 
after that, he moves more towards an offensive style against Tony, which you'll see. He's now hitting first. He's now finding his lock in the center, trying to wear Tony down, but not having to catch him and then move to the King's move. So, as you can see, I think he's very versatile. He's a good mix of offense and defense, and I think that's what gives Quinlan an advantage over Danny. Uh, when I watch Danny's videos, he just seems like he's more of a, a defensive-minded puller. He doesn't really have a mix from what I can see. That doesn't mean he doesn't have other weapons up his sleeve that I don't know about, but these are just videos that I found, and without seeing everything Danny's got to offer, I can only work with what I know about. But there, as you see, Quinlan getting more and more dominant, and on this last one, he shows his ability to hit, pins Tony right off the bat, and I think that's what shows that he's got a lot of power in in the start. And again, I, I just don't think that Danny will be able to catch him. That's the difference. Wow. For this next match, Ermes versus Matt Mask, I'm picking Matt Mask to win. I think Matt has superior hand control. And when I did see Ermes pulling in matches, he is very strong. But it does look like most of the time he has hand control. And when he doesn't have hand control, it does seem like he's vulnerable. So I'll explain this a little bit further in the upcoming video. All right, so we're moving on to Ermes. And as, as you see, Ermes in almost all these matches, it's just a really strong top roll, but it is all left hand. So unfortunately, I can't completely be sure of how his dominance will be right hand based on these matches, but he has a very strong top roll. And when he does lose, it's because it looks like his hand does get taken. So I think that that's the difference here for Ermes, is that if he can keep his hand, then I think he has a good chance to win because he's so strong once he has the hand, hand position. The interesting thing is that I did see in this video though that he ends up actually using a hook in one of his matches, which is very impressive. I believe it's this match right here. Yes, he dives right into a hook, pins him quickly. It shows that he's not only a top roll, but he does go into the top roll nearly every time. And Matt Mask is also one of the strongest top rollers in the WAL. I would say that his hand control is is quite up there. You know, you, you rarely see Matt Mask lose hand control in a match, and I believe that that's why this could be a really interesting match versus Ermes, because if Ermes can't get that hand control, I think that's where Matt Mask has the advantage. And as you see here, he ends up fouling out once he loses hand control in this match. And again, that's why I, once I saw him in a, in a match where he loses hand control, it seems like that's a little bit of his weakness. And then here we move on, he's pulling Dimitri Trubin. Trubin's able to hook and top roll, but Ermes makes pretty quick work of him. It's, it's amazing how Ermes makes it look like, you know, Trubin can't even keep his hand, which definitely shows that Ermes does have good hand control. However, maybe he lacks a little bit of side pressure, or Trubin's side pressure is just that dominant that it makes it a lot harder for him to pin Trubin. But at the same time, clearly he had no problem taking Dimitri's hand. You'll see here, he fires off quick, he fires off hard, there's a foul, but in general, that's the big question mark for Hermes is will he be able to fire off faster and harder than Matt Mask? And Matt Mask is used to the wall cadence, so I think that's also another difference maker that will make it harder for Hermes. Then, after this, we move on to Hermes versus Michael Todd. And it's impressive. He actually is able to pin Michael Todd twice in this matchup they have. That alone is, is one of the reasons why, again, it's still a, kind of an X-factor of Ermes coming into the wall and, and hey, how will, how will he do? Will, can he beat some of the wall champions? It's, it's very impressive. But I think that it's, it's possible Michael Todd underestimated him, didn't immediately go to his, his, uh, his sweet spot, didn't know what to expect. But, you know, in the end, Michael Todd's able to wear down a lot of guys. He might lose the first match, but or even the second match, but after that he usually finds a sweet spot, he drains you out, and sure enough he'll be pending you slowly after that because you're exhausted, you, he's taking everything out of you, you're trying to pen him. So again, like I said, very impressive, Army's able to transition to a press, he he knows how to top roll, he knows, how, he knows exactly what he needed to do to Michael Todd, but I think at this point 
and we're watching now, you know, he's exhausted himself. Michael Todd's starting to figure him out. He's getting better hand position on him. And uh, if it weren't for fouls, which is what happens here, I, I think that he probably wouldn't have pinned Michael Todd again. So really at the end of this, you'll see that uh, Michael Todd ends up fouling out and Ermies ends up getting the win in the, this uh, matchup they have. But it might have gone a different way had Michael Todd played it a little differently. But in general, I can't completely negate the fact that Ermies was still very dominant. It, it's possible it could have gone either way for here in this matchup. But, you know, if, if, he, if he brings this kind of intensity to the matchup with Matt, it could surprise me. All right, so now we look at Matt Mass versus Marcio Barbosa. And here, you see he completely contains Marcio and makes quick work with his top roll. Marcio is a dynamic puller. He's able to top roll. He's able to hook. And the, the fact that Matt's able to control the match is still very impressive because Marcio is so strong. And again, he can hook or top roll. Now, this third match, though, right here, shows that if Ermes could actually catch Mask, and he can drain him out. If he's able to actually fight back from, you know, a position where he doesn't have hand control, which I just didn't really see in the videos, but if he could, this is where I think that Matt might have trouble. You, you see here that he can't quite pin Marcio, and this happens in other matchups with Matt, and Marcio slowly works his way back. He's able to drain Matt until he's able to get the pin in this match right here. But at the same time, again, can Ermes actually fight in a losing position? Uh, of all the videos I found, it doesn't really look that way. But we could be in for a surprise. All right, so this final match, you know, Marcio is already tired and Matt makes quick work of him. So again, even if Ermes does take one match, who's to say that he'll have any energy left in the tank after that? Okay, so then I also wanted to focus on this match with Matt versus Todd Hutchings. This matchup, in my opinion, was a bad matchup for Matt. And this is where I think Matt's weakness is. You know, he's going up against a guy that doesn't need his hand. Todd is one of the most strongest pound-for-pound -pound guys in WAL when it comes to side pressure. Matt takes his hand, but it doesn't matter because Todd doesn't need his hand. He pushes right through and he'll pin you, and that's exactly what he does. Uh, I, I just think that if, if he goes up against somebody with too much side pressure that keeps him from the pin, he ends up getting worn down, and, you know, it just makes it to where that's why he, he can't win this matchup with Todd. Okay, then we move on to Jerry. This is another one where you see side pressure and, and Jerry's press just dominating Matt. Uh, it, again, it, it, this is where I think it showcases Matt's weakness, which I don't think Ermes is all side pressure, so that's why I'm leaning more toward Matt here. But the impressive part is that look at how dynamic Matt was. And he lost the first two matches. He adjusted there in that third match, and he actually managed to get a win. He ended up losing the next match on fouls, if I recall. In the matchup versus Victoria and Tatiana, I'm going to pick Tatiana to win this matchup. I believe that her power will be harder for Victoria to hold in the center. Victoria has a lot of endurance in the matches I've seen. She is able to out-endure her opponent, but the thing is, is can she catch Tatiana's hit? And if she can't catch her hit, it doesn't matter how much she can counter her power and sit in the middle. All right, so moving on to Victoria versus Nancy Locke. It doesn't seem like Victoria is an offensive puller. She kind of catches in the center. She holds you, she drains you. She has the ability to turn the match around by finding your mistakes and waiting to gain every inch she can from that center point. Uh, the second match after, that happens after this, after she gets this win here, it shows the danger of her defensive mindset because she can't always catch every hit. And that's where I think she'll have a harder time versus Tatiana because she lost that quick hit and pen. All right, and then the next couple matches, Back to her, her technician in the center, you know, I think she adjusted a little bit. That's why she was able to catch. Maybe Nancy didn't hit as fast or hit as hard. Maybe she got a, a worse start. But for sure, if Victoria can actually catch Tatiana in the middle, this is what could happen. You could just see her grinding in the middle. She's by far probably one of the most endurance athletes in the women's divisions. When I, We'll get to that in the next couple matches. But... 
she's able to drain her opponent and basically she'll outpull you. She'll if, if if you can't beat her on fouls or if you don't flash pin her, it seems like she will find a way to win because you'll be exhausted by the end of, of your battles with her. And then this last one, she's again right into the center. She even gets a little bit into the losing position, but she's patient and patience is key. Uh, a lot of people end up losing their matches because they immediately go for that pin pad way too fast and they leave their arm behind. But you don't really see Victoria do that. As long as she's able to lock her arm in there and she doesn't get pinned right off the bat, it seems like she can pretty much outlast anyone. And that's how she wins these matches with Nancy, it appears. So you'll slowly see this happen. She'll work her way over and then that's it. That's how she won the match versus Nancy. And then I wanted to go over to this other match with uh, Carolina Peterson. Uh, again, she actually is in a worse position here, in my opinion, in the straps. It shows that she is able to pull pretty well in the straps, even in a losing position. But the crazy part about this matchup is that she grinds, she holds in the center, and her hand is completely open, and she's still in this match. She does end up losing this matchup to fouls, which is unfortunate because we don't know if uh, her opponent would have ever actually pinned her. But for sure, this match goes on for a while. Uh, after they foul here, they end up going on to another um, round, and then it's almost over two minutes, and then she ends up fouling again, unfortunately. All right, and then Tatiana. You see there, she had a quick hit on Erica. She pinned her quickly. She did it again. I mean, this is where I see Tatiana's strength. She has so much power. She's really fast off the ready go. And I think this is what will be harder for Victoria to contain is the fact that she's so fast. I don't know if Victoria will actually be able to catch her. And that's why I still think that Tatiana is favored to win this matchup. And then in this third match you're seeing here with Erica, she shows that she can actually pull from a losing position and still win. You'll see her slowly grind from this losing position with her hand bent back. So clearly she has some crazy side pressure, at least enough to win the match from a losing position. And, and I think that's also another disadvantage for Victoria because she doesn't need her hand either. And if Tatiana is that strong, hey, she could be stronger than Victoria in the center. We'll have to see. This is where I think you'll see a little bit of Tatiana's weakness. She's pulling, uh, I believe her name is Karamanova from Kazakhstan, and she's able to catch Tatiana and then eventually she's able to turn around, pin her, and that is the difference, is that if you can catch Tatiana and you can keep her from getting a pin within the first, you know, 20, 30 seconds, I think you can drain her out. And that's what Victoria would have to do. If Victoria can can catch her, hold her there, that's the, that's the difference maker. I think that's where I'll be surprised if she can, but if she can catch her and hold her there, just like that final match, that's... That's where I think she would actually have a chance to beat Tatiana. In the matchup with Jeff and Adam, it's actually a pretty interesting match. Uh, they're both able to top roll. They both can even hook a little bit. Uh, so they don't really counter each other's style for the most part. Uh, Jeff does have quite a bit of endurance. He's able to hold his matches uh, with his matches that he had with Sam Harris even when he, he lost. There was the point where he even turned around and hooked Sam. So he's able to adjust and come from behind. You know, if, if, if he realizes what's going wrong, he does seem to make those adjustments. He did the same versus Jamie Sheldon after losing 2-0. Uh, he came back and won 3-2. So I think his ability to learn from his matches uh, that he had previously is a big factor that helps Jeff and he is familiar with the new super match format When I watched Adams matches, I, I believe most of his matches were in the old tournament series You don't know how those people were uh, pulling before they they had their match up with Adam It doesn't mean that Adams not also strong. He has a good hook and top roll as I was saying as well uh, he did beat Luke Kent and he was able to actually hit faster than Luke. That could have been just a better start. We don't know, but otherwise he, it looks like he has a pretty fast hit sometimes. Uh, but the other thing is that he was beatable in a high hand top roll. And so I think that Jeff will see this. He'll look at some of the old videos of, of Adam pulling and he'll probably adjust his style. So that's why I'm picking Jeff in this matchup. 
in the final matchup with Todd versus Jerry, I have to pick Jerry here. It's not that Todd hasn't won some unbelievable matches. He's probably the strongest pound for pound arm wrestler when it comes to side pressure, but it's hard to stop Jerry's press. Michael Todd was able to engage his King's move, and it became one of the longest matches in wall history. Even though Todd had hand control, sorry, Michael Todd had hand control, Jerry was still able to pin him and, and engage his press with his hand completely bent back. And additionally, when he pulled Devin Lorette, this is where he kind of has a little bit of a weakness if someone can come hard inside, down on his wrist and prevent his press from getting fully engaged. That's how Devin was able to bleed him out and he did end up winning that matchup uh, three to two. Jerry gets his first win on foul, so we're not sure, you know, if he would have gotten that first from a pen, but the second one was a pretty convincing quick pen because Devin wasn't quite ready or something happened or Jerry was just better off the start, but he goes in hard, engages in press, and that was just a quick win like Jerry tends to do versus most people even. He did it versus Matt Mask, except for when Matt Mask was able to adjust and catch him while one of the opportunities in the match. But then that shows how even Matt was able to beat him with a strong top roll. But I don't really see that as Todd Hutching style. Todd usually uh, is more of a side pressure puller. He'll beat you with his side pressure. But that's why I don't think this is his best matchup versus Jerry. Because Jerry doesn't need his hand either. So you're talking about two arm wrestlers with a lot of side pressure. But I also think... Jerry's able to almost engage his body weight behind his arm. So unless Todd can actually stop Jerry from getting behind his arm and engaging his press, I don't think that Todd can actually win this one.